Welcome to Hammer Down. Down. Number one sports gambling podcast coming out of the Pat McAfee Inc. offices. I am your host, Tone Diggs. I am joined by the nuke man himself, Bubba Gumpino. Good day, Tony. Good jo- day, Tony. Thank you. I love what he's uh, I love what he's good day, Tony. <laughs> I love what he's, he's like, does he tip his hat when he says that? Well, he's Canadian, nice, Mike. It's it's in his blood. It's just they come out of the so womb. Nice. They come out of the womb, sweet and sugary, all that maple syrup. Jo- you heard you heard his voice joining us on the uh, FaceTime, Mr. Michael Lombardi, former NFL GM. He's had every single role in an NFL franchise. Uh, you can listen to him every single day on VSIN, uh, the Lombardi line, the GM Shuffle Pod, the Daily Coach, and he writes for The Athletic. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pat is currently on an interview, finishing up an interview with local Pittsburgh radio because uh, Dustin Colquitt got got uh, cut today. So, of course, they want to ask Pat if he's coming back to punt. <laughs> uh, Michael, I want to start with you before we get into last night's game, before Pat gets in here. So there's been a bunch of injury news uh, today. Joe Mixon's out. Austin Hooper's out. It seems like Jarvis Landry has a broken rib. I don't know if he's going to play. Emmanuel Sanders uh, is out because he's going to be on the COVID reserve list. It doesn't seem like Michael Thomas is going to play. It seems like Julio and Calvin Ridley are going to play. Out of all those things, what do you think is the best that, uh, that affects this weekend the most? I think if Julio and Calvin don't play, that's a real problem for Atlanta. They are playing. It came out they are playing. Oh, they are playing. Okay, I was going to say, I thought if they didn't play, that would be a real problem for Atlanta. I mean, you know, uh, the Michael Thomas and the Emmanuel Sanders thing, that to me, that bothers me. Because I have that line, I have it a lot closer than the seven. I think you had it around Seven and a half that it is. I have it as a two point, uh, two and a half point game. <laughs> and another guy that I know that does handicap, and he has it as a pick em game. So you get seven points and you get two of their best weapons not playing carolina's a pretty good play here hey you got teddy two gloves against the spread as a dog too mike yep what is the yeah, uh, I mean, you got stats and, on and that we got you know 50 percent of the bets 78 percent of the money everybody's on the panthers and that line moved from seven and a half to seven so oh, it's at seven the line already. movement's consistent with the, the consistent with where the money is that's the key the line movement being consistent to where the money's going like the New England game, everybody's bet in San Francisco, the numbers moving towards away from New England, you know, but, but then you get a game like uh, green Bay, Houston, which everybody's betting in green Bay, but the line's not moving. Yeah. It's that, that scares me a little bit. Uh, I'd like to welcome into the studio, Mr. Inferno himself, still on fire. Mr. Pat McAfee. How's it going? Thanks for your power rankings last night. Lombardi <laughs> locking in a dub for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I- I mean, isn't that beautiful? I give you the tip, and I go against my power rankings. I mean, I'm a, I am a the certified <laughs> idiot of all time. But I, I mean, look, sometimes it, I had a, I thought they would play better. I, I, I mean, I don't think when I looked at my power rankings, I had the Giants rated as a better team based on numbers. I think that's right. The Eagles are bad. They're, They're not a good team at all. That we were talking about before the show. I mean, Wentz has no, just, just he just doesn't give a single damn about what he does with that football the whole team does not what about that guy doing the lateral after he picked oh, up the yeah, with, fumble with 47 at, seconds left still. at half what yeah it was four, it was still a chance to have yep. a whole scene they're like ah yeah, fuck it here we go <laughs> you take it hey, hey, hey pat let me ask you as, as an ex-player when you watch a guy who's gotten the shit kicked out of him like Wentz, are you like surprised that the coach keeps running him like they like they call the quarterback draw from the eight. Like yeah, you can't call a quarterback draw from the eight. It's too far. The, the Red Sea is not going to part, right? Moses isn't out there. <laughs> like you only can call a draw from the five in because you don't want your quarterback to get hit, right? You want it to be a surprise. Mm-hmm. When you call it from the eight, people can rally to the ball with anger, with anger and violence, and they're going to hit your quarterback. Andrew are, Luck. Are you... Andrew Luck Go used ahead. to get killed whenever we were, uh, whenever he was. He, he got killed his entire time, but there was a lot of times where we were wondering because we weren't calling design quarterback runs. Andrew would just hold on to it and continue mm-hmm. to run. So the conversation was almost more like, how do we get the word to luck to tell him to take care of himself? This one with Doug yeah. Peterson taking care of Carson Wentz, it's a whole different story. You know what I mean? So I've seen, right. I've seen a guy die, Andrew Luck, and then on the, on the plane ride home, like go up to him and tell him, like, you might be the toughest guy I've ever seen. Like, you just, you don't care that you get killed. Like, I told him that exactly. He was like, no, I'm nowhere near that or whatever. And Andrew's big thing, and I would assume this is Carson's as well, because they kind of chatted about this. Andrew almost didn't want to disrespect football. 
So he always thought if he quit on a play or something, it would be like viewed. And I don't know if he thought other people would view it or if he viewed it. Like he didn't want to quit on the game or quit on his team. So like every play, he was going to try to squeeze everything out of it that he possibly could. And I think that is something that potentially hurts some people. Danny Dimes seems to have yep. the same exact thing. That's why he has so many turnovers. Yeah. Carson Wentz is getting absolutely slaughtered. Joey Burrow seems to have the same thing. A lot of quarterbacks can get past it. It felt like with Andrew, he was like, well, that's not that's not how I know football. And it was like honorable it was like okay i respect the hell out of that thought but also like it'd be cool if you know if you were alive so we yeah, could all definitely. win maybe because of how damn yeah. good you are football. you know yeah. what i mean well carson does that and then like he threw that terrible interception in the red zone they did run that draw uh so many times they do the, the zone read that doesn't work they haven't i haven't seen the eagles make a two-point play th this entire season they it feels like they go for it more than anyone else weird design there on that two-point conversion too i don't know how you get 69 past the line of scrimmage he must have thought that was a quick throw is that what he thought was happening there he must have i mean and then i thought i thought the quarterback draw from the eight was one of the worst calls i've ever seen <laughs> and then that was only rallied up by throwing the ball to hakeem butler on an alley -oop, a guy who's never caught an NFL Four pass, who is notorious for dropping passes at Iowa State. Like, how do you sit in your office during the week and say, hey, let's get Akeem Butler the ball this week. Let's do it in a really a critical spot in the game. Like, how does that happen? He can't even throw the flag on time to challenge Mike. Uh, Mike Pereira, by the way, coming in and being like, you know, it's not our job to look at the coach to see if he wants to get a challenge or not. Pereira's like, because I assume that's something that a lot of coaches expect. Like, hey, I was going to, you saw me doing it, and the refs yeah. are like, no, actually, we were paying attention to the game because we have to. That was a very interesting situation. If you go to, and they got to win too, by the way. So we're talking yes. all this shit, and they got a dub. That is what the NFC East is in a nutshell right there. Right. So, right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, the Giants have played every team in the NFC East, and they've played them as competitively mm -hmm. as you could be. And and they're and they've lost all but one. They probably should have, they probably should have beat the the Eagles, the Washington football team last week, and Dallas before that. They're covered they, machines, they, though. They, they, they are all three games. Hey, and they hung tight against the Rams. I that. said I said it early. This is my squad. They they <laughs> route. They're they're a tight group. It feels like they're going to keep that thing close. They just can't get over to hump to win the game. Evan Ingram drops that oh. ball. That's game over if he catches that and also kneels it out. You're under oh. an automatic lock. Oh, easy. But instead of going the opposite way, he has a heart attack. We do this whole thing, <laughs> and it, it was a wild night. Uh, speaking of the NFC East, a game that we didn't talk about yesterday, the Cowboys are at the Washington football team. Uh, last time I checked, Washington was plus one. It, you could uh, you could find them at minus one to plus one. They're hovering all the way around there. Uh, Michael, is this a game that you'll look at at all? You know, no. I, I mean, this is a game that uh, it's now even. It's a pick 'em game coming in here. Uh, I had it as I had really as as the. the Dallas should be a 2.6 favorite. You know, the line opened up kind of close to my line at three and a half, and now it's moved. The betting numbers moved the other way. I don't know how you feel really good about betting Dallas. I don't really know how you feel good about betting Dallas. Or You're Washington. just guessing yeah. you bet Dallas at this point. Or Washington, too, Pison. I mean, that's. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm staying away from this one, really. I, Washington's offense, to me, everybody talks about their defensive front and how good it is. But that's a lot more talk than it is reality. I mean, they haven't really rushed like you think they would. And the Dallas is going to play their third string right tackle and their backup left tackle. And Zach Martin's got a concussion. So, you know, the injury factor, I gave Dallas a C for injuries. And, and Washington, to me, has a bunch of injuries, too, with no receivers. They have no receivers. With I them. mean, this game is so bad. I don't even think Gumby's got any nukes on this game. Dallas stinks, Mike. I got a nuke for you. I don't think any – so what was it, two years ago, Dallas Cowboys had the best line in football? I don't think anyone from that line is currently starting this week because not, of injuries and, and other things. Not just two years ago. Two, it was like known. Yeah. Like, remember, what was that running back, DeMarcus Murray maybe? DeMarco yeah. Murray. DeMarco Murray. He was the guy the behind that though. offensive line, like what, seven, eight years ago yeah, yeah. or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then that carried in and carried in, and now it's like, no, it's a very different world down there. And that used to be Jerry Jones – Staple. Do you have any nukes for this game? Uh, Dallas have won seven of eight in Washington, but the, yeah, the home team that... is four and one against the spread their last five. I mean, you throw that out the window when you got the red rifle back. I mean, there. the the only the only thing that I'm thinking here, I'm not taking it, but like you would take the under if a struggling Washington <laughs> offense may actually look good against this Dallas defense. I yeah, I think if you do anything, you got to take the over. I mean, uh, Gandy Golden's out, Steve Sims is out. 
but all their receivers are out. Like they don't have receivers. <laughs> Isaiah Wright's out. I mean, they have they have they have McLaurin. That's it. Yeah. And they've got Cam Iman and they got Dr. Iman. That's it. That's all they have. They don't have any receivers. Yeah. How are they going to make plays? The so, Cowboys going to ride this thing out with Dalton no matter what? You think, Mike? Or they try and get somebody? Yeah. I mean, they paid him seven million. Yeah. You know, I think they got to give him. They got to give him every chance he can. How awesome is that, by the way? Seven million is shit for a quarterback in the NFL. It's so much more than what Cam Newton's making, James Winston's <laughs> making. He's not going to win a damn game down there. That's so much money. Yeah. All right. How it's about how about Lions at Falcons? Uh, I believe it's minus two Falcons. It is. I, I said to kick off the show that Ridley and Julio Jones are gonna play. Um, you guys have any thoughts on this? We'll start with you, Michael. I, I don't trust Detroit. I mean, when you watch their defense, they rushed better last week against Jacksonville than they have all year. You know, but Atlanta's offense, I think they're going to play hard for Raheem Morris. I thought when you watch that Minnesota game, that was the best I've seen them play. They did different things defensively. I thought that they tried to mix up what they were trying to do in the back end. They didn't let you get that. Raheem Morris kind of really took over the defense without Dan Quinn over his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I thought the offense played as well as it could. This is the perfect game for Matt Ryan. He's not going to get a lot of pressure. He's going to have two big time receivers that are going to get open. You know, every the money, the line moved toward Detroit. Everybody thinks that I had it as a two and a, I have it as a 1.56 game. The line came out at two and a half. And uh, let me see. I think it moved slightly to two, right? Did it move just? Yeah, I currently have it. Two? I currently have it at two. Fifty three percent of the money's on the Falcons. If I leaned anyway in this game, it would be Atlanta for sure. Yeah, I'm with you there, Mike. Feels like Julio's playing to get out of there. I, I think they have to trade Julio, Pat. I mean, they have Me to. They're so bad on the cap next year that they need to trade Julio. And I think Julio knows that. I think he knows he's got to get traded. And there's a lot of teams, the Colts, there's a lot of teams that have cap room to take him this year because next year they're not going to be able to keep him on the roster. He's coming to the Colts? You think, you think he's coming to the Colts? <laughs> No, no, I don't. I think oh, the Colts it's just a spot that I, could fit. I think fit. they have the cap room. What I'm saying about the, the Colts next year can't give away any draft picks because they got to be in position to fix their quarterback position. One they got to hold all their cards. I'm, I'm looking at potential live betting situation here. Whichever team is up late in the third quarter, whenever the team that's trailing gets the ball, I think I'm going to live bet the trailing team because neither of these teams are very – they're they're very good at blowing leads. God, I don't know. Yeah, did, you see, did you see what the Falcons did to the Vikings? This is a that's, whole new team. Yeah. This is – without Dan – it feels like – this is a brand new Falcons team, and it sucks for the Lions because the Lions fans think that they have a potential chance of going to run. This feels like a brand new Falcons team. Whether they're playing hard to get out of Atlanta or whatever they're trying to do to stay in Atlanta, who cares? I think this is a a route. Remember, yeah. remember, we have a rule. I have a rule. Whenever coaches get fired, it potentially lifts the team. Mm-hmm. Was that only for one week, like what happened with the Texans whenever they end up losing to the Titans? But they played all- their ass off the second week, yeah, too, they now. They did. They, I, they really did. That's a great Titans team, by the way. For the Texans, I think that goes down to the drain down the drain now that they blew the end of that game. I think that momentum's done. But the Falcons still do have that new coach momentum. That's what I'm thinking. And I and I don't want to take this game either because Foxy, who is our uh resident Lions fan, he legitimately thinks they're gonna win seven straight. So I don't want to openly <laughs> pick against him because there's a little bit of a hope there. But this feels like a Falcons game to me. Lions 0 and five against the spread, their last five in this matchup. Oh. And Stafford in four games in Atlanta has only thrown for four touchdowns. Really? He's going back to oh, the University of Georgia time. Now. All right, uh, another game talked about a little bit earlier. I said Austin Hooper's out. Uh, Jarvis Landry, Landry, I believe, has a broken rib. Uh, Joe Mixon's <laughs> out for the Bengals. The Bengals are getting three and a half at home. Uh, uh, Pat, you you like this game at all? Or? I'm not picking this one at all. You have no idea what to expect. Joey Burrow, last game against the Colts, first quarter maybe looked like, I don't know, Peyton Manning uh, met with uh, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers and had a child. It was unbelievable watching him play football. Then it obviously turned. Phillip Rivers got hot. The Colts defense started making stops and everything like that. And with the Browns coming off an ass beating like that without Austin Hooper, how is that team going to respond? I don't think I know enough about this Browns team. I don't think I know enough about their culture. And the Bengals, they feels like they play everybody tough until I say bet on the Bengals. Mm-hmm. So I'm going <laughs> to stay away from this one. This is not a game I'm going to pick at all. Michael, what do you got? I would take Cleveland if I picked it. I don't like it. I think Cleveland will run the ball on Cincy, which will make everything better. They did the first time. And I think they can run the ball on Cincy. Now, here's my problem, and this is why I don't want to touch the game, and I don't think people should. Cleveland's defense has not given up less than 30 points in any game this year. Wow. You know, and everybody thinks that, you know, well, they got Miles Garrett. Yeah, he can rush the passer, but – 
you know, I mean, remember the last game Thursday night? That was a, a go-back-and-forth game. Baker played really well in that game. They threw the ball. I think missing Chubb hurts their run game a little bit mm-hmm. in Cleveland. I, I take Cleveland if, if you had if I had to. They're a C injury team. You know, I had the line at 4.6, so, you know, you're getting a reduced rate, but I, I'm not in love with it. Foxy, I, I saw you come in. Do you have a, you have an opinion on your, li- on your lines? Yeah, I heard you guys were back and forth, Falcons lines, and I don't blame you. But I wanted to drop one nuke that I saw this week that okay. might change your mind. Okay. And that is the fact that Matthew Stafford, a guy that went to Georgia, loves the state of Georgia. This is actually his first time ever playing in the state of Georgia at Atlanta. So that is my nuke of the day. Gumpy, please read your nuke about Matt Stafford. I mean, in, you can't in just Atlanta. come on here, Foxy. And Stafford, four touchdowns in four games in Atlanta. Is that in Atlanta? <laughs> Yeah, it's in Atlanta. That's what Gumpy just Is said. It, are you sure? Are you don't even listen to the show? What do you do? You just see Lions and Falcons. You're like, I'm fucking going to come I here read and that, see. Barry McCocker told is, me this morning. That is a stat. I read this week. He has never played in the state of Georgia. I got there. Uh, actually, he's never lost in the new Atlanta stadium. Oh, uh, the Mercedes. Oh, that's, not what Mike <laughs> said. that's not what my tweet said. Is the soil being hijacked in the show? And the this. soil at the old Atlanta stadium? I'm just asking. Jesus, Lombardi. This is what we got to deal with with Lions fans, though. Like, oh, come on. Uh, well, I now I don't, I don't know what. Too. I don't know what freep.com is. No, it's D- D- Detroit Free Press. Thank you. It says that he is 1 and 3 against the Falcons, but has never played in Atlanta. Bingo! Is Gumpy's nukes? Boom! Oh, is this too e- Oh, my God, no. Foxy. <laughs> oh, my God. Are your nukes <laughs> just completely wrong oh. again? Oh, no. What is Gumpy. going on? Do we, do we self-implode good. on the, the news? have been a question all week. They have been a question week. all week. <laughs> oh, my God. This is, a, this is a heartbreaker in the office Michael, right now, you Lombardi. Hear behind the, I mean, everyone out in the office is going wild. Oh, Lombardi, these, <laughs> we live and die by these nukes. This can't happen. He cannot be wrong twice, Mike. Oh, no. Uh, everybody, as, as Parcells would say, one wrong, all wrong. So, you know, just got to come out back. You just got to get it back in here. <laughs> oh, man, Gumpy, what's right. going on? Yeah. <laughs> Michael's going to get it. It was versus Atlanta. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, no. Foxy it's walked it off. Ball. He did. God damn. All right, Michael's going to go in 10 minutes. So let's start the pick segment. Pat, you have the. Um, My, I'd like Lombardi to go first so he can get ready for whatever he's got in 10 minutes. What are you writing another? Are uh, you writing another book? No, I always do Boston radio at four. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and I told them to stop calling me at like five or four. I'm like, you, know, you say four o'clock, like just because you know I don't, you know, so busy I guy. Radio hey, we call you no, right I, at three. I always do a radio show up there every every week, and I'm sure I'm going to catch a wrath of crap this week. They're already they're pissed off at the receivers, which means they're mad at my son. So I'm going <laughs> to have to battle for him this week. You know? <laughs> All right, what do you got this week, right, Mike? I like I, I like I like Pittsburgh. I really do. Okay. I think, you know, when you look at Tennessee, they've given up 13 touchdowns passing. They've scored 13 touchdowns passing. I think Tennessee's a great offensive team. I think Arthur Smith is tremendous. I think that this is the first time they're going to play a balanced team. And Pittsburgh is really kind of remarkable what they've been able to accomplish offensively. They rank 19th in the NFL in big plays, plays of over 20 yards, and yet they rank first in plays of over 20 yards that score touchdowns. I mean, they hit home runs. They hit home runs. And they're really good on third down. You know, they could be better on first down. But when you break their team, when you break Tennessee down, they're not good in the red zone. They haven't been able to rush the passer effectively. Clowney has five pressures, no sacks. So I I think Pittsburgh's the better team. Now, here's the real one. Here's a new for you. Oh. I'm going to join the For the Brand new comment. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh it's go, Gumpy getting cut. Right? And I, and I wrote this for The Athletic today. Okay. This is the fifth time since the – it's the fifth time I wrote about four of the other times that two undefeated teams have met this late in the season. Okay, Gump's shaking his head. And the winner of the game has gone to the Super Bowl. Oh. Big game. Which team can go to the Super Bowl, you think? Steelers. I, I think the mo- and so based on that question framed that way, Pat, I think the most complete team here is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think the Steelers are the play. I know that there's a ton of line movement to Tennessee. I like Pittsburgh. All right. Who else do you like? You know, the other game I really like, I like the Chargers. I, I say that again. I, I mean, I like the Chargers. <laughs> 
I, I think that I think when you watch Jacksonville, there's receivers are still not healthy. Chenault and Chark are, are not healthy mm-hmm. this week. I think this is an inter, inter squad game, right? So <laughs> Justin Herbert has always played against the, the the Pete Carroll defense, which is what Jacksonville runs. Gardner Minshew always plays against the Pete Carroll defense, which is what the Chargers mm. This is an inner squad game. And I think whenever you get an inner squad game, the better players win. I like the Chargers in this game. I'll lay the points to the Chargers. And, and then I, I think I, I know Denver's a good team, yada, yada, yada. Mm. They played well last week. I, I like the Chiefs and lay the points. Michael, are you worried about – so I just found out an hour ago from company – which, by the way, who knows what that means? I did check it. I did go to weather.com. Three to five inches potentially in Denver on Sunday. Does that does that mean anything? Oh, to I you? didn't know that. No, can I back off? Can I yeah, you can. Back, please? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. So Saturday, I guess it's supposed to be like sixty degrees, and then Sunday the high is like twenty three in Denver. Oh no, I'll take that back. I, the other game I really like, I really like Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Will that be on I Sunday? Think Mon- will create a lot of problems. I have it as one of my strong picks. I have this game should be a seven. It should be a. They should be a favorite by a touchdown, and it's a three point game. I really like Tampa Bay a lot. I really like your picks, Paisa. I like I, that too, much. I, I really. And, and by the way, yeah. if you have to bow out here, we we got your picks and we understand that. If you want to stick around and listen to, I want to listen. Yeah, I want to go until I have to go. Because I'm gonna make. I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to leave the team. He's out, dude. He's he's out of the Survivor. He lost the Survivor. Mike's out. Yeah, he's a big loser in Survivor. The um, aren't you out? Are you out on the Survivor? I don't know. I, I don't. I, am I out? I, I I we haven't played it in a couple of weeks. I think don't, I forgot uh, to get your pick don't. last week. So be, it was one of the weeks where I like accidentally said goodbye to you. You know what? You're in. Who's your Survivor pick this week? <laughs> there you go. My Survivor pick this week would be the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Ooh. I mean, that line is dropping. Michael, is that surprising you? I know no, no, nothing surprises me. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you gotta when you turn your money into the book and bet the Jeff, you better wear a hazard suit. <laughs> <laughs> you literally have no idea what shit's coming. You Sam yeah, Darnold starting exactly. for him. You have you no idea. So you're getting the Bills at minus ten there, which I believe is quite a tasty line there. Yeah. Uh, who would you like to go next? Uh, I want company to go just because specifically I'd like to hear his nukes before I make my selection because I have my picks locked in and it's nice to hear Lombardi's potentially yep. on the side of a couple of them there. But Gumpy needs a massive bounce back for his credibility for the nukes and everything like that. So I'd like to hear what uh, my table partner has to say. Well, for my first pick, I'll take great pride in this. I'll take Atlanta minus two. Okay. Nice. Well, how come? But, you know, Matty Stafford's Matt, never played, played in Georgia, Atlanta. Dude. Lions one and five against the spread. Their last six is a dog. <laughs> Two and six against the spread, their last eight road games. And when the Falcons get hot, they get hot. Ooh. They're four and one against the spread, their last five following a straight up win. Okay. And they're five and two against the spread, their last seven following against the spread. Big winning streak team. Okay. They continue. get hot. They uh, are streak shooters, Gumpy yeah. says. Now, by the way, we implore you to do your own stat checking here now that we <laughs> potentially have question marks. I, I'm mistake. just saying. It's an anomaly. Go ahead. Packers minus three and a half. Yeah. Rogers off a bu- or off a loss. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Five and zero against the spread. Last five falling a straight up loss. Good call. Packers also five and one against the spread. Their last six versus the AFC. <laughs> and you can go back to 1972. <laughs> Green Bay hasn't lost to the Oilers or the Texans in Houston. <laughs> Michael, I'm a little wow. surprised you didn't jump on that Green Bay. I wanted to. I have it on my list. It's one of the. It's, it's the other one. I just. I'm scared. It looks too obvious. <laughs> yeah. I, trust me. I, we, I feel the same way. Got me. What else? And you then got I'm with Bucks or uh, Mike okay. on Bucks minus three and a half. Oh, three and a half. Three and a half. Where oh, you get... four. Sorry. Four, four and, and a half. half oh, my friend. Four and a half. Still yeah. on it. Raiders five and twelve against the spread. Their last seventeen following a bye, and then Gruden after a bye, get losing by eighteen and fourteen. You got any nukes for when all five starting linemen haven't practiced all week? Uh, the Buccaneers are four and one against the spread. Their last five as a road favorite. There you go. And then I'm with Mike on the Chargers too. The Jaguars have lost four straight. They haven't covered in four, and they've missed covering by twenty and a half. 15, 10, and 7. Uh, yep, this is what we talked about yesterday. Jaguars may be who we are, thought, thought, thought. They and were. the Chargers, 4 1 and 1 against the spread, their last six. <laughs> and then I'm adding this, or I took the Steelers with Mike as well. Gee, how many picks you got this I week, got pal? Six. <laughs> That's a lot of picks. All right, so you got the Packers, 
Falcons, Bucks, Chargers, Steelers. What else? What's your last I'm one? I'm adding this one. This is because of Sanders and Thomas being out. Yeah. The Panthers, 4-1 and one against the spread their last five in New Orleans. <laughs> Saints are actually 2-6 and six against the spread their last eight home games. And let me take you to Teddy Two Gloves Town against the spread. <laughs> Please do. 30 and 10 against the spread overall. Woo. 13 and 3 against the spread, falling a straight up loss. Boom, boom. 18 and 4 <laughs> against the spread as a dog. Wow. Boom, 16 boom, and boom. 3 against the spread on the road. Woo. 14 and 2 against the spread as a road oh, dog. Boom. Give me Teddy. Give me the Panthers. Give me the points. And I'm done. All wow. right. That was awesome. Uh, Paisan, you got to go soon. So, uh, no, go. I want to hear your picks. You're hot. I want to hear them. I like the Panthers as well, plus seven and a half, strictly because Emmanuel Sanders, Michael Thomas. I feel like there's a little beef. This uh, suspension of Michael Thomas for being disrespectful to the coach makes me feel like there is potentially some shit stirring down in the locker room. Seven and a half is a lot of points for that Carolina Panthers team who seems to play everybody pretty close. Matt Rule seems to have that DNA. I, I'm not 100% sure. The Saints could just absolutely do this thing. It just doesn't feel like it. To uh -huh. me, seven and a half is a good number there. I also like the Pittsburgh Steelers plus one and a half. Yeah. I like that a lot, a lot. I think that the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is whenever we get past this season and look back on it, will be historically talked about. I think they are that type of defense. They are game wreckers, Pison. I agree. They're good. Uh, and I also like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, minus four and a half against yep. the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, where they play that on Sunday, or if another positive test comes tomorrow, they play it on Monday or Tuesday. I think that Todd Bowles defense knows exactly what they're fucking doing now at this point. And I think Tom Brady with Gronk back, 100 yards receiving, touchdown, all that stuff. The Gronk being back is a massive, massive, Massive ordeal. And I like... <laughs> I like the Cardinals plus three and a half at home against Russell Wilson. Don't, and, don't back down from it. I mean, I wouldn't take it with Russell Wilson, but my power rankings say the Cardinals should be the favorite in the game. Okay, that makes me feel good because <laughs> when your power rankings and I are on the same side, good things happen, much like what happened last night. I like the Cardinals yeah. plus three and a half at home against Seahawks. All right, and I'm taking the Packers. The Bills. Oh, whoa, whoa. Add the Packers onto my list as well. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, Diggs. I'm so All right, now I got to go. See you, Michael. I'll, I'll, I'll talk next week, guys. Thank you. See, See ya. ya. Hey, Mike. So I have the Packers for all the reasons. I mean, yeah, all of bounce them. back. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. On top of Houston just getting their hearts ripped out last week, that team's dead. The Bills, I mean, Jets. Until the Jets cover, I'm gonna, probably going to bet against them. Smart. And so, the Bills. He, even Sam Darnold? Even Sam Darnold, because on the other side of the ball, Josh Allen hasn't looked as had, he hasn't looked incredible the last couple of weeks. It is bounce back week for Sam, for Josh Allen. Okay, I agree with that. By the way, because the MVP, MVP talk was happening and Super Bowl talk. Was like if the Bills want to be talked about like they want to be talked about, they're gonna to have to bounce back. Haven't heard statement much game from old Bills mafia lately. I have also been relatively quiet on the Bucks. Let's go. Good move. Smart move. I am on the cards. Okay, good move, smart move. And the one that no one else took in here, um, I'm on the 49ers plus two. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Patriots stink. Really? Yeah, the offense stinks. I think the uh, 49ers are going to pack the box. I think they're going to force Cam to throw. I don't think Cam can throw to save his fucking life. I said during the show, I like this bet, but I just won't bet against Bill Belichick for one I, I think Shanahan's crafty. He'll be able to score some points against that defense. 34-28, 34-27, yeah. those so are always me, the score. Give me the 49ers plus two, and it goes to Gumpy's bet of favorites, uh, minus less than two and a half Ow. this season being poopy. Yeah. So give me the 49ers uh, plus and, the two. And Connor in our office has been saying that the Patriots are dead. Yeah. He is the Patriots fan in the office who said that the, they stay. The Seahawks are also one and four against the spread their last five in Arizona. Oh, thank you for that. And one, one and four against thank you. the spread their last five against the NFC West. As well. oh, let's go. All right, Needed boys. Uh, so for it. Survivor, um, you two are in it. Uh, what's your favorite pick of the week that I'm going to use for your Survivor? Uh, who else is in it? Who's all in it right now? It's Ty. Okay. Zito. Okay. Mitt. Gumpy. <laughs> you. And Lombardi. All right. I think we'd like to hear what the... Mitt, what do you like? Want, don't we? I kind of want to hear what other people... All mean. right. I'm going with uh, the Packers. Wow. Yeah, wow. Minus two and a half. That's beautiful. Wow. Zito. Uh, Bear Don. You already know. They don't play this week, man. Monday. Monday night. 
They play Monday. Yeah. That'll boy Diggs. We were going to cover that on Monday. Correct. You knew that. Ty? Uh, Packers minus two and a half. Yeah, that's probably smart. Son of a bitch. Uh, Gumpy? Panthers. Or, uh, I was going to take the Packers, but I ain't doing it now. Wow. Can't do it now. Bear done. Bear. Ride Teddy. Well, Teddy eight and a half. That's a lot of points, isn't it? Eight and a half down there. The Saints, you think they're going to be like game? eight and a half points? Bucks minus three and a half. Oh, that one's tasty, but it doesn't really take you away you got from that the hook, score though. there. Yeah. yeah. Falcons minus one. No, you know, I, I I like Matt Stafford going back to fucking Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. He's never done that before. <laughs> I think mine's going to be the Carolina Panthers plus eight and a half. That's where okay. I'm at. Whoever did that was very – that was a very good call. I forget who it was. So. I think it was Connor Becker. No, no, no. I do have a nice little bit. Though. I'm out of the survivor pool. I'm out of it. It hey, you stink. Uh, You're the one that said that the Patriots stink, too. Mm-hmm. No, that was me. That's why I came Gumpy, your last one. What do you want? I'm going uh, Chargers down to minus six and a half. Like, oh. You crossed a very important number there. That was smart. Smart. Who the Chargers play? Uh, Jags at Jags. home. Oh. oh, I love Chargers as well. I'm almost want to add that to my pick. <laughs> do you want to? What is it, seven and a half? Yeah. Ooh. You want six picks this week, too? I'm out. I'm out. Okay. It's a, yeah, I know. Gumper, That's one of the ones I should do, though. And maybe I'll look. No, I'm not doing it. Connor, what do you got, Becker? Hey, look, guys. Sunday, National Tight End Day. Let's go ahead and let's parlay a bunch of tight ends to score. I like Gronk. I like Jared Cook. I like TJ Hawkinson. I like Hayden Hurst. I like, I like Bob Tunyon Funyon. I like uh, George. Kittle. I don't like that, but I do like that. <laughs> Got but, him. Uh, and also Waller. So I like and Kelsey. I mean and, and Tyler Croft for the Bills. He's and Izzo. Like and Izzo. Throw a bunch yeah. of tight ends together. Get a little frisky. National tight end. I like it. Let's go. Not a babe. I like it. You're not getting that anywhere else, I promise you. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don't forget it. You haven't seen it on social media. They haven't even been promoting that it's National Tight End Day. <laughs> By the way, they wanted to send us a t shirt to promote National Tight End Day, the NFL did. And it arrived during our show two days in a row. It is somewhere held up in a oh, is that what <laughs> So the fact that you brought up National Tight End Day, it just made me remember, like, oh, the NFL asked if we would talk about a National yep, Tight here End. here we are. I'm hey. happy we did. Hey. Way to go, Connor. Hey. Go, boys. Come we on. can't thank you guys so much. Uh, uh, we, uh, what? Well, I'm plugging it. I got well, No, I got one okay, last go thing, ahead. Tony. Hey, is it accurate or not? Because today there has been a rough showing by the bombs. Yeah, Foxy buried me. He got me good. And it's uh, your back, pal. Crystal Palace footy play tomorrow. Ooh. Okay. Uh, there's an option at FanDuel Sportsbook. Draw no bet. Minus 108. They're against Fulham, who hasn't won a game since coming up to the Premiership. Ooh. Wilfred Zaha has scored four goals in five games this year. Zaha. Draw no bet. You win. You get your money. If they draw, you get your money back. Gumpy will also be tweeting out all of his footy picks uh, from his Twitter account, which will re- be retweeted by at Down on Twitter and Instagram. Pat will be on game day tomorrow giving out his three locks on college game day. I will tweet out my college picks. Uh, you like Crystal Palace, you said there? Draw no bet. They're minus one. If we're fucking around, I kind of like Illinois plus 20 and a half tonight against Wisconsin. Ooh. Ooh. Draw no bet. Crystal Palace plus 100, by the way. Plus 100 now. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, tasty little treat. We can't thank you enough. Numbers are going up, so that's good news. People like it, I guess. Keep telling everyone. It's a good show. It's good. It's a good show. Oh, uh, we will have some merch coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you send in... What was it, Gumpy, what we're going to do? We'll do the highest odds winner. Like, not the most money, but the person who had, like, the highest parlay Like, if, if you had, like, a plus 40,000 yeah. parlay hit, like the guy that hit last night for $46,000. Good for that guy, by the way. Quite, yeah. a, quite a tasty wow. little treat there. Should send him some merch. Actually, he can fucking buy it himself. <laughs> Yeah. He's got 46,000. Yeah, he's got 46,000. He could buy it himself. You're welcome. <laughs> so send in your winners uh, of like your highest odds winning parlay or whatever. And if you win, if you're the highest of the week, we will send you some merch. Hashtag Hammer Don. With Hashtag yeah. Hammer Don. All right. Can't thank you guys enough. See you on Monday. Hammer Don. Don.